Hello everyone and welcome back, Dome here and in this video I'm going to talk about a skill that every producer should have and this is how to report bugs. Yes, bugs. Let me explain right after this. So, bugs. There is no person on the face of this earth that hasn't come across a bug uh, in a piece of software, in an application, on a plugin, uh, in an operating system, all these things. Bugs and software go together. You know, there's rarely any software that doesn't have any bugs. Okay, if you look hard enough, you will find a bug. Now, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I've been doing troubleshooting since I remember myself. Since I got into computers, I was always obsessed with finding what the problem is when a problem arises. And I remember this especially with older operating systems. I remember especially with Windows XP. I did a lot of troubleshooting when I was using Windows XP. There were many problems. There were some RAM limitations and all these things. But because of this, I started becoming practical and uh, I started becoming happier when I found that I know now how to report a bug. And that's the reason I'm making this video. I know that quite a few of you know how to report a bug properly. But I know that there are many people out there, many people, just go on forums, just go on Facebook groups that have no idea on how to properly report a bug. And when this happens, they end up getting frustrated, they become angry, they make less music, and sometimes they even quit making music. And there's no reason for this to happen. Bugs are always gonna be there, but you need to know how to deal with them. And you also need to be able to communicate these to companies or developers so they can fix them. And this is the most important thing. You need to help the developers and the companies fix the bugs because they might have lines and lines of code like so much to think about and you might have discovered a specific bug that you only can reproduce. So let me give you a very practical guideline on how to report bugs so that you can be happier, you can make music and instead of doing troubleshooting like I was, you'll be able to just write a simple email and have more chances of getting the bug that you found fixed. So step number one, take a big breath and stay calm. Seriously, I cannot stress that enough. I know it's really frustrating when you find a bug and it stops you from working, but you really need to step back, take a big breath and say, okay, we can fix this. We can figure this out. If you start getting upset and you get all jumpy and uh, angry, in the end, you're probably going to go on a forum and write a very, very rough you know, message or a rough post and you're going to be all upset and everybody's going to be upset because you're upset and going to be like, hey, you didn't give us any information. Uh, we can't help you with that. You know, get lost. This is what happens most of the times. So take a big breath, relax and do what I'm about to tell you. Step number two is read the manual. Seriously, read the f manual. You can't imagine how many times I've got questions by friends, fellow producers, and they say, oh, you know, I found this bug in this plugin, or I found this bug in Keybase, or whatever. And many times it's because they haven't read the manual. They don't know how to use a certain feature. They don't know how a plugin works. And you don't want to embarrass yourself like this. Not only you will embarrass yourself, who cares about that? You might embarrass yourself. Nobody's perfect. But you will waste time. You will start writing emails complaining about a bug that's actually not a bug and it's a feature or things might be working a different way than what you'd expect. So before you start classifying something as a bug, read the manual. I cannot stress that enough. I would say 80% of the times when people are not tech savvy, it's because they haven't read the manual. So please read the manual before classifying something as a bug. Step number three, did you actually read the manual? Don't skip that step, I see you. Step number four, check the system requirements 
for the plugin, the application, the DAW, and see if your system meets those requirements. Sometimes, especially for Mac systems, even a small incremental version of macOS might cause a plugin not to work. So make sure that you have the right operating system so that you can run the actual plugin or application you're trying to run. Sometimes you might also need to check your hardware. So for example, maybe your audio interface is incompatible with a specific application, or maybe you don't have enough RAM or all these things, or your graphics card is not up to par to running a certain application. So you need to check all these and make sure that you meet all the minimum requirements. The other thing that you need to do is make sure you download any updates for your DAW, for your plugin, for anything that you're trying to run and gives you a problem. Because it might be that a plugin doesn't run well and crashes your DAW because you need to update both the plugin and the DAW or vice versa. So all these things you need to check before you start writing a bug report. Check that everything is nice and tidy. Make notes of all these things. So say, okay, this is my operating system. This is my plugin version. This is my DAW version. This is my RAM. This is my CPU. This is the driver for my audio interface. This will be super useful in the next steps. Step number five, search. Search on Google or any search engine you want and check if somebody else has the same problem that you have. Now, in my opinion, searching is actually a skill, searching effectively. Many people know how to search, of course, but they don't know how to phrase the question or the terms they want to search correctly or effectively so that they find the results that they want. But in any case, I would say go on Reddit, go on the company's official forum. Go on different forums and start searching on Google. Check if somebody else has the same problem. And if you find it, then check if there is a solution. Because it might be that these people have already figured out how to solve your problem and you'll be such a happy person. But sometimes you might not find anything that's related to the problem that you're having. And this should give you a hint that this could be could be system specific. So it's your own problem and it's a problem that's related to your setup. But I'm going to come back to this later because I had an experience like this and it wasn't that. Step number six, do some basic troubleshooting. Now, when I'm talking about troubleshooting, it depends on the problem that you're experiencing. But for example, if you have a project in your DAW that crashes all the time, then start looking around. See, is there any plugin that you haven't used before and you're using now? Is there anything weird going on in this project or unusual that you haven't done before and might be triggering a bug or a crash? If nothing works, try and remove each one of the plugins one by one. I know it's a tedious process, but you have to do it. Let's say you have a specific plugin, remove all the instances from this plugin. Restart your project. Does it crash? If it does crash, remove another plugin and so on and so forth. Of course, this will be specific to the problem that you have, but it's a good practice nevertheless. Step number seven, try and reproduce the bug. Try and reproduce the bug in a way that is as simple and as clean as possible. What am I talking about? Let's say that you found a bug in your DAW and you're trying to find a way to replicate it. When you figure out what happens, let's say you add an audio track and your DAW crashes. Okay, does it also happen on a completely empty project? Try that. If it doesn't happen, that means it's something on your project. Start removing things. Again, try and make sure that you remove needless information and just keep the stuff that you need in order to replicate the bug. Then when you manage to find a good reproduction, then you can write down all the steps you need to do, like in perfect detail, and then you're ready for the next step. Step number eight is contact the developer and the company that creates the plugin or the DAW or the application that you're running. Now, I cannot stress this enough. Please be polite, okay? Be kind. There are actual people working on the other side, <laughs> you know, support people. They have feelings, they have their own troubles, they're trying to help you, that's why they're there. So if you start writing emails, swearing, cursing, I know this is rubbish, you're not gonna help yourself, I'm telling you, because guess what? Nobody's gonna want to help you. So be polite like 
the way you'd be polite, I hope, if you went and bought some coffee and the barista didn't add cinnamon on your cappuccino, you know, you would go back and say, hey, can I have some cinnamon? You would be polite, I would hope. So you should approach this in exactly the same way. You go to the developer and say, look, I found this problem. Here's how you reproduce it. Can you help me? Common sense. And then we come to step number nine. Give the company or developer as much information as you can. Don't wait for them to ask for it. This is just non-effective. It's really like going backwards. On your first email, explain what your operating system is, the version, the version of the program, the version of the plugin, um, your audio interface, the drivers for your audio interface, pretty much anything that's relevant to your issue and your system, let them know. Because if you don't let them know, what's gonna happen is they're going to respond to you and say, oh, could you please tell me what your operating system is? Some people don't even save their own Mac or PC. So give them as much info as possible. Send them screenshots if you can show the problem with screenshots. Even better, send them a screen recording, even just record your screen with your phone, you know, and send them a Dropbox or Google Drive link. It's going to be so much easier. It's going to make the developer's life so much easier and they won't have to ask you a million questions just to figure out what you're talking about. Especially if English is not your first language and you need to communicate in English, just show a video. A picture or a video is worth a thousand words, so you will have a much easier time communicating the problem to the company or developer. So please, please, please take a screenshot, take a video. In the end, it will help you out. Step number 10, explain the conditions that are required for the bug to happen. And this, if you've done your reproduction steps from the previous point, you will be already ready to go so you don't have to do anything else there, but make sure you give them enough information. So in order to reproduce the bug, I open my DAW, I load this instrument, I load this preset and then boom, it crashes. These are very clear reproduction steps. The support representative can go try it out and see if it happens on their system. And if they can replicate this, happy days, because now you're so much closer to fixing the bug. And I'm going to say this again, be helpful, be polite, okay? Uh, it's, it's just common sense, but I think I need to say it because I've seen so many times people going on forums and being so rude and so upset and so angry and, you know, at the end of the day, nobody's gonna die, you know, in, it's very important. I understand how important it is to fix bugs like this. And as a bonus, I'm going to tell you one of my stories when I found a huge bug in a piece of software. It was actually a library and I actually really helped to fix that bug. So in a nutshell, that was quite a few years ago, many, many years ago, but I had bought this library with a specific player. I'm not gonna name the company, but there was a big bug where when you were using the sustain pedal in Cubase, the sustain at some point would last forever and you couldn't stop it. And this bug was really torturing me because I had a lot of work, I was under a lot of stress, I had to get music done for a film and this was really slowing me down because I was playing everything real time and at some point while I was getting the perfect take, I would hear the sustain ring forever. Now, I went to the forum of that company, I started writing about this problem and there was one specific person in this forum that was really getting on my nerves. He was saying, Oh, you know what? In my DW, it doesn't happen. So it must be your DW. So at first I was like, you know, he might be right. So I tried three different DAWs and it was happening on all three of them except the DAW that he was using. But he wouldn't take it. He was convinced that Cubase, my DAW, was the problem. And I was 100% sure that it wasn't Cubase. Long story short, I managed to prove it because I managed to create a project that could replicate the bug perfectly with just a few steps. And I managed to prove that this was not Cubase that was the problem, but it was a problem with the actual plugin. And in the end, the developer was so grateful that I managed to find this bug that they actually included me in their beta team. And 
I still to this day have a great relationship with them. But this wouldn't happen if I got really upset, I got really angry and I started cursing and swearing and just make everyone feel bad. You really need to do your homework and if a bug fix is really important to you, then it really pays off if you spend a little bit of time so that you can create some clear reproduction steps. And trust me, the developers are going to be really grateful, they're going to help you out, and everyone is gonna be happy, there's gonna be a happy end. Trust me. So I hope this video gives you a good strategy on how to approach bug reports from now on. In the comments down below, let me know, do you follow all these steps that I just mentioned when you're filing a bug report? And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and also hit that bell notification icon. It's really, really important. It really helps me out. I hope you enjoyed this, my friends. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.